Please don't. Right, we'll get started. So, hello, welcome back to the GRM Sport Podcast. My name is Sean Bowden, and today we're joined by the first ever Woman of Steel, Georgia Roach, and her Casper teammate, Kelsey Gentles. How are you guys doing? Too bad. So we're going to start off with your grassroots stories. Obviously, there isn't a lot in the media about the women's side as of yet. Obviously, as time goes on, that's increasing. So just tell us a little bit where you guys started off. Starting with you, Kelsey. So how did you start off rugby-wise? Um, my rugby story is quite short, whereas I played for a very short time in in high school, like in year seven. Didn't play for long. Played football instead and did uh, a lot of sprinting, like athletics for until I was 16. Do you miss the football or do you, do you prefer rugby? I prefer rugby over yep. football, but sometimes I do miss um, athletics and stuff. But then my brother used to play and I used to want to play, but um, my mum was like, oh, rugby is not really for girls. It mm. wasn't really popular uh, or as popular. And then when I was 16, I just decided, no, I'm gonna, I'm just going to do it myself because I'm 16 I can do what I want. <laughs> You've not looked back since, no. have you? Uh, brilliant, yeah, there we are. What about you, Georgia? Um, well, my dad played, so I was around it all the time. My brother mm. played. And then I joined a team when I was like five, six years old. And I've just played ever since, really. I played with the lads until being 11. Then I moved to a girls' team. And I've just played ever since. 2015, I took a year out to play football mm. and then came straight back. What was your, what, what, both of you, what were your first clubs that you played for? Juglinton was mine. Oh, Drug, yeah. yeah. East Leeds. East Leeds, wow. So two local teams. We'll get to like your local selections later on in the podcast. Um, but obviously, a lot has happened since you guys started playing rugby, and now you play for Castleford, one of the biggest teams in female rugby at the moment. Um, really popular. A lot of you guys play for England, you know, getting international honours. Um, but do you, f- do you feel professional now? I feel this year it's a lot more professional than it has been in previous years like mm. there's a lot it's a lot more stricter and we are having to look over our shoulder a lot more and think about what we're saying what we're doing how we're conducting ourselves so i feel like it is more professional mm. it's still got like a long way to go before we can call ourselves professionals yeah. we're not getting paid we haven't got like the same accolades as the men so but I feel like it is more definitely more professional than yeah, previous think, years. And I think at Casa do create a professional environment which mm. makes you feel like you're a professional. That's what I was going to say. Even though you may not be getting paid, you're still trained at professional standard, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Like it's a professional club and you're treated almost equally as the lads, aren't you? I see mm-hmm. on Instagram and social media that you guys train in the same facilities and you, you've been physios, etc. You've got yeah. media managers and you know that's a long way from amateur, I think. Yeah, so it's, you, it's a professional standard. Casper is, is a good set up there where it is the one of, probably the one of the most professional clubs there is to be at so we're very lucky yeah, ace. Um, like I said the game's come a really long way and I remember seeing on social media that kids were waiting after a game to get photos <laughs> of you guys are you guys used to the fact that you're in the limelight now and people want photos or? I think now we are like the first couple of times we were like what you want a photograph of us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were like what do you want a photo with me for but now it's we're getting more used to it now. It's not as daunting. Yeah, I mean, 51% of the country is female. So by alienating half the country by not having a women's game, you know, you're shrinking the game, aren't you? And by you guys having such a big platform now, there's so many girls who have this platform and say, like, I can do it as well. The first time I encountered you guys was at uh, London Nines, which is a, a tournament in London. It's in two weeks' time, I think. And uh, it's run by a good friend of mine, Graham Oliphant. And uh, it was my first introduction to sort of the Women's Super League uh, because it started the same year you guys went down to London Nines. We both enjoyed London Nines. <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, London Nines, I think you guys enjoyed it far too much. One of the standout things for me was, uh, was it, Tar- is it Tara Stanley? Yeah, her performance was amazing. It's sort of zigzagging through everyone. Yeah. But the most memorable for me was uh, what happened after the tournament. And there was a lot of, uh, lot of games being played, um, lots of uh, games... We probably can't mention the podcast, but you guys seem to be enjoying <laughs> yourself hell of a lot. <laughs> um, most most of these, if, if, if you're thinking uh, quite dodgy, most of these games did involve eating whipped cream, so and all oh, kinds of food. Eating. Yeah, I'm sure I've got some video footage which I'm going to put over this podcast. So you're going to see it all, <laughs> see it all, to, see it all in the podcast. The Tiger Olympics, they call it. <laughs> I think I've got some really good footage of you eating whipped cream. <laughs> oh, no. So uh, there we are. Um, t- uh, speaking of sort of shenanigans before and after games, I will say that the women's game has um, much more personality than the lads' game. I think he beat the boys hands down when it comes to personality. But Georgia, as the game becomes more professional, obviously you went to the Man of Steel, Women of Steel uh, do, it's all you know, a black tie event. As it becomes more professional and you do more events like that, do you feel like 
the personality is going to be taken away from the women's game? Are you going to be able to maintain this personality as time goes on? Yeah, I think um, we will because we've, that's what we're used to. Whereas if it, we'd have been around the professional environment right from the beginning, then I suppose it'd be different. Yeah, what about you, Kelsey? What do you reckon? I feel like... Do you reckon you're going to be Kelsey Gentles throughout your rugby career? Or do you reckon it's going to come a, p- a point where you're going to have to rein it in? No more singing Sweet Car- Caroline at the top of your lungs and like doing skanks and all kinds of things. No, <laughs> like that's me. And yep. I feel like if I changed the way I was, then like I wouldn't be that person anymore. And yep. it's all to do with enjoying rugby. Like I enjoy being in that environment. I enjoy singing Sweet Caroline at the top of my lungs <laughs> for every game. Yep. And like just getting around the fans, being with the fans. So I feel like when as soon as I start not enjoying that, that's when I probably won't play rugby. Super. Um, just touched on professionalism, obviously. Kelsey, I'm not sure what job you do, but you mentioned that you got put in a headlock in your last job. And I'm also oh, not sure yes. what, um, George, you do for a job, but... Um, I was told that you're quite keen at cleaning bathrooms. <laughs> well, you're looking oh, confused, and that's, oh, that's no. fine. So I was, I was speaking to... Um, yeah, can, jo- the the realisation of the story about to happen is hit, is hit Georgia. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so I was speaking to Callum Winley. He's a good friend of mine. Obviously, he's, he's from Hull, and he's one of your coaches, isn't he, Callum? Yeah. And he's a really good bloke. His, his, his family are rugby mad. He's a great Jokes. guy. And obviously, I always do a bit of digging before podcasts. So I said, Callum, right, I've got George and Kelsey. I need some stories. And he said, right, there was a time where he's playing truth or dare. God, God, knows, God knows what the truth was, but he's adamant you're not going to do it. So fair enough. Um, so your, your coach, Lindsay Anfield, dared you to lick the toilet. And he did, apparently. And, and not any it toilet. Was apparently it was it's a changing room toilet that <laughs> cast. So, uh. <laughs> it was one of the girls who, um, who were playing odds on. Right. Actually. What's odds on? So what are the odds of you doing this and you say one to ten, three, right. two, one, if you both say the same number, you, you have, have to, to do, do it. it. Oh, God. So what are the odds on that? He <laughs> actually ended up doing it. One to one. One. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And she licked the toilet. Terrible. So it was the toilet bowl. Is that the, <laughs> was it the toilet bowl? Yeah. Oh my god! Was that a cast? The, like the yeah. changing rooms? The no, the I drank up. the toilet water. Lacey, Lacey licked the toilet seat. Oh my god! You, you drank the toilet water. You're disgusting. Right. If you ever are in the cast changing rooms for whatever reason, just know the toilets are very clean because George has made sure of that. Um, <laughs> So what's the worst thing you've been dared to do then, uh, Kelsey? Because obviously we know what George has been dared to do. What's the worst thing you've ever been dared to do? Uh, uh, obviously podcast PC friendly. I know there's a few um, things we can't mention, but... At Castleford. Yeah. Oh, the demons do all sorts. <laughs> and I do it. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. So, uh, so normally on a Monday we'll do like recovery swims right. at this um, place, the village south. It's next to White Rose. And then um, we were there doing his recovery swims. Everyone's like taking it real seriously. And Georgia <laughs> dared me to do this, you know, like a seal. Like it goes. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, dare you was to it, do Was it. the public there as well? Yeah, there was people there. And then I, I was like, all right, I'll do it. I did it all across the, the side oh my into God. the water. Lindsay was not impressed. Right, we need to dig out some video footage of this thing. happening. If not, Georgia. Took a video. Really? Right, I'm going to dig this out. I need to see it. It was really bad. Um, <laughs> you're not out of the woods just yet. Um, obviously, I was speaking to Callum. He didn't really have as, as gory stories as George's stories. But he told me the one thing that stands about Kelsey is that she can't help but twerk at any given moment. <laughs> and, yeah, and he also said this isn't ordinary twerk and it's, ups, it's like handstand twerk. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's everywhere. He said, right, you know, you could be doing a team talk and 20 seconds later, you turn around, you're in the handstand doing the twerk. So you've got some sort of twerking uh, obsession. Um, I'm teaching all the girls. How to twerk? <laughs> yeah. There we are. There we are. Life after rugby, twerking by Kelsey. So look out for that. Um, also on Kelsey, um, what's your favourite song? Oh, Bossy. Oh, no, I do like them, Bossy. I'm a bit confused. My favourite song. At the minute? Yeah. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Mocking it. Mocking it. Well, I was going to say Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline I've, is I've got one a video clip which I'm going to show over this uh, podcast. To be yeah. Singing the Sweet Caroline, but everyone else is sort of singing it, you know, happy, jolly. They're obviously happy they won. But it's Kelsey in the corner, absolutely <laughs> battering her boats against the floor. <laughs> God knows who she's trying to resurrect doing that, but um, it's fair to say um, that's your favourite song. <laughs> when we were in the semi 
vinyl, I yeah. bang my boots so hard, I split him. Really? There's <laughs> <laughs> like a little girl stood in the corner in that video, just like looking real timid. She's like, please, please calm down. <laughs> she wants to come in the changing room Did with she? me. Sing it. <laughs> Um, she got scared, bless her. Right, back, back to some rugby questions. Uh, Georgia, obviously you guys have set the highest record of a, you know, scoring-wise in the game. I think it was 100-0. Who, who did you play in that game? Wakefield. Wakefield. Um, obviously, I well, from what, from the outside looking, from the results I see, I don't watch every single game, but I try to follow it as close as I can. From what I see, it's a bit of a three-horse race between Leeds, Saints and you guys. Maybe Wigan uh, here and there. Would you say the game is a bit more competitive than the four teams or would you say you guys sort of stand out because of the professionals, because of the, the extras you're given? No, I'd definitely say it's more competitive. Like right. Bradford are up there as well, you know. Yeah, They'd true. Like to yep. give a good game. I think it's not just a case of it being a free horse race. There is other teams. But it just depends on the day, really, and who shows up. Who would you say is the second strongest team af- after you guys? Um, I can't really say because mm. there's it, different teams bring different things. Like... Um, Leeds have really strong D. Saints have really good attack. Yeah. You know, not taking away the, the you know the defence from Saints, but the attacks it's like something special. Yeah, true. Just going on to the Challenge Cup final. Obviously, I was there at the build-up. I was doing some stuff for the RFL, and you were there as well, Georgia. And obviously, it was a joint press conference. The lads. It was a really, really big build-up. Uh, you guys were billed as the favourites because you had such a strong season lead up to the final. Um, but what do you think tipped the balance when it came down to the final? What do you think? Because obviously the game was so tight the first half. It was going try for try. And I was like, God, who's going to win this game? Courtney Hill scored that freak try, you know, half length of the field and dived over the, uh, under the sticks. And that sort of tipped the balance. But, um, but barring that try, what do you think caused you guys to sort of slip out of the race? Yeah. Turn up, we didn't play how we know we can. So yeah. it was all entirely down to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, Leeds turned up, strong defence turned us over. Yeah. I feel like, like even though we've been having such a strong season, we hadn't been tested in that way. Like mentally, physically, Leeds really did turn up. Their defence were outstanding. Yeah. They can't take anything away from that. Their, on the edge, like defense, the defence on the edge was ridiculous. Like yeah. you guys are going around the edge quite often. Their def- and their they, they all just drifting just, really well. So and it's something when like they they want to play for each other when a prop's running from the middle yeah, to the edges su- to push you support, into touch. Yeah. Like you've got to give credit when it's due, and and they deserve the credit. They deserve to win it, and we just need to. We had just had to dust ourselves off and. Uh, and prepare ourselves that we're going to be in those situations again where we're under immense pressure and we need to prepare well enough to be able to deal with the pressure. Yeah, with with Castleford and Leeds being the top two teams in the women's game, uh, Kelsey, um, and obviously a lot of you guys play for England from the two teams, is there a genuine rivalry between the two teams or are, are you friends and sort of you, you forget that you're friends on game day or do you actually hate Leeds? No, not at all. And- <laughs> Obviously, when you're playing for a team, you you want to do anything you can for your team to to succeed. Like I'm playing for Cass, I want Cass doing everything. Any of my friends that play for Leeds, they'll do anything they want to do for play for Leeds. I used yep. to play at East Leeds with Chloe Kerrigan. Yep. She plays for Leeds now. I play for Cass now, and we st- there's no bad blood between us. But obviously, she wants Leeds to win. I want Cass to win. And yep. whenever we go into the environment, like when we go to England training, we don't get there and think, oh, they're those yeah. Leeds girls. Do you guys Leeds sort of because in in the maybe not in rugby, but I know in football, Rio Ferdinand said that you know different clubs sit together at training when England come together. Yeah. When you guys go training, do Cass sort of sit together and then Leeds sit together, or do you try to mingle as much as possible? We do try to mingle, and uh, the coaches at England they tr- they try their best to like combat it, like mm. pair it with someone not from your club, Brilliant. try to keep you away from each other as much as possible. You speak to your teammates twice a week already. You don't need to come on a Saturday and <laughs> spend all day with them. Then you speak to other people from other clubs. So you're both um, Leeds girls, um, but you play for Castleford. What made you choose Cass over Leeds? Uh, start with you, Georgia. Um, well, for me, I was I was at Fev at first, and then. I was just looking to go somewhere else and came across Cass first. I went down to some train sessions mm. and that was it really. I was interested from the beginning. I didn't really really go look anywhere else. Um, it was a bonus for my mum. She's a Cass fan. So there we are, yeah. <laughs> it was a win. Keep it in the family. <laughs> what about you, Kelsey? What made you join Cass over Leeds, even though it's your hometown club? Um, when I played in England Students, Lindsay was the coach and after the, that tournament had finished, she asked me, to come and trial at Cass and I was only um, 16 and it, it was my first season of rugby and right. I've just been there ever since like Lindsay's a good coach 
she's brought out the best in me, so yeah, that's why she's I still involved in England setup, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah she's so assistant coach. brilliant. Right, coming up to the last section of the podcast now is a new thing we're introducing called Instagram Moments. Okay, so I've got three pictures each. I'm going to show you, show you a photo. They're all PC from Instagram. Uh, nothing dodgy. And um, all you got to do is tell us the story behind the photo. So we'll start with you, Georgia. There's your first picture. What's the story behind the photograph? Um, it was one of my last ever games for Jews Remore. Mm. Um it was actually my birthday. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> and I was going to play for Fev after as well. Wow. Against Cass. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look, everyone's linked to that. And just kick ball through. Yeah, oh. I actually dropped the ball. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's such a good <laughs> photograph. <laughs> the photographer's been nice here there because he could have um, put the photo of you going, <laughs> missed it sort of thing. So yeah. <laughs> we're going to go for Kelsey's first picture. What's the story behind this photo? Oh. Some familiar faces oh. there. This was the first game me and George ever played together. Um, this is when we met at Yorkshire training. George was trying to make it look bad in trials. <laughs> uh, but we've since forgiven each other, haven't we? Jean? What do you mean she tried to make you look bad she in trials? She was just trying to show me up. She was <laughs> trying to show me up in trials with that dummy that, that she's got. We've all seen that dummy. Look like the best of friends in that photo, <laughs> to be fair. I don't know. But we've, we've since made up and this were in the Yorkshire game. We lost. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got we it. lost against Lancashire, but right. it Georgia, your second photo. This was on my oh. birthday, actually. Was it? <laughs> yeah. It was actually your birthday. That's mental. Yeah. Two birthday picks so far. Um, oh, so. that was Yorkshire West. That was the second year of Yorkshire West. Right. Um, How old were you in the picture? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Wow. I could tell you're doing some kind of Mr. Hot Step or going through people. Oh God knows what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this was at Eastleys. So I remember. Yeah, yeah, it was at Eastleys. Yeah. Was it? Right, yeah. Kelsey, your second picture. What's the story behind this one? Uh, this is me last year in Yorkshire under 19s. Right. Against running, balling. This before or after your leg break? This was after. This is the first Yorkshire game after my leg break. Wow, yeah. Uh, so obviously to go from a leg break to playing for, Eng to playing yeah. for Yorkshire is huge, yeah, isn't it? Definitely. It's been a long road. Yeah. It's all right now. When you, I've never broke, I play rugby as well. I've never broken a bone. When you break a bone, especially a leg, yeah. Do you, do you ever sit there thinking, am I ever going to play rugby again? Yeah, and that was a that was a big question for a long time. I was in I was in pot for like eight months. Every time I went back to the hospital, they was like, oh no, it's not ready yet. Yeah. There was a lot of didn't know whether I was going to be able to play rugby again. The doctor didn't think I was going to because of I had so many fractures in such a small area, but. Uh, I was just determined. I yeah. was like, no, I'm going to play again. Brilliant. A lot of people say injuries like that make you a better player yeah, afterwards. And you've been scoring tries for fun, haven't you, <laughs> since? So uh, it's probably worked out better for you. I know. Um, Georgia, your last picture. What's the story behind this photo? <laughs> well, um, it's when I won the Woman of Steel. Yep. Um, Obviously stood with... Ben Barber. Yep. Um, Man of Steel. I think that's that pe that picture speaks volumes because obviously Ben Barber, NRL, you know, is known worldwide and you're stood with him, which just shows the level that women's games come to. And you're the first ever woman of steel, and I think that's really impressive. And it's well deserved as well, watching you oh, play. Thank you. Even in the final, I saw you just trying to, you know, create something out of nothing. And that, you know, not every rugby player can do that. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm gutted that you didn't get over the line uh, to win it, but I could tell you you gave it everything. That's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, Kelsey, your last picture. What's uh, the story behind this? <laughs> First of all, who's that on the far right? Because she's Tamsin. got a fantastic poles there. Tamsin, loving life. <laughs> uh, this is us, just being us after just the me. cast game. Yep. This is us every week, just messing around. 20 seconds later, in the change room, flying boots and all over. <laughs> <laughs> flying boots, throwing water bottles about, yeah. like we just won grand final because yeah. we've only just won a game. Like I said, it's the personality <laughs> aspect. Like, you wouldn't see that photo um, after a Super League game. Everyone looks miserable, straight over to the sky to do their interview and straight in the change room. But that's just, that, is a, that epitomises you guys oh, as a team. Comment. I love it. Yeah, I think this was after we'd Saints. been Saints. Yep. And... Because we, we had so much like anxiety going into the game. We know our Saints play and we knew we had to really turn up in order to turn them over. So I think just the adrenaline it got to me after the game. I was <laughs> like, oh my God, we actually won. To be fair, I think Tamsin's got far too much adrenaline in that picture. <laughs> Tamsin she, loves she can't that, cope with it. She can't, can't contain herself. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that's been our podcast. Thank you very much for coming down. It's been a pleasure. Um, lovely to meet you both. Obviously, I've met you a few times at games. First time we've sat down for a conversation. So hopefully it's not the last time. And good luck with your careers. You're both fantastic players. And 
you guys are sort of pioneering and going to take the game to a new level. So keep it up. Thank right. you. No worries.